So hey guys, today I just thought we'd do a quick FAQ video because I get a lot of questions asked about either my channel or the lithium batteries in particular. And I just thought I would clear up some of the questions because even though I am a small channel, I do get asked so many questions that I almost can't keep up anymore. So I will direct towards these FAQ videos in the future. The very first thing we want to talk about is going to be safety. So I've mentioned before, when it comes to lithium batteries, we want to treat these things very similar to like gasoline. I mean, yes, we do have to respect them. When they're fully charged, they're more dangerous than when they're discharged. And I'm going to show a few videos of people doing things that I wouldn't do to them because they've already done it and there's no reason to recreate it. So watch these few video clips here and you'll see what I'm talking about. The first thing that Spicy 110 starts doing here is using a pellet gun and it's not penetrating. Uh, didn't really work, did it? No matter. So then it decides to take a wood screw and drive into the side of it. Pretty violent. I did start this video out saying I was going to do some dumping today. You should be careful, alright? Maybe put it on the side. Yeah, you want to be careful. No gloves, no safety glasses. Yeah, pretty violent. Bloody hell! Oh my goodness! Can you, can you come? Yeah. Imagine this. Imagine this multiplied many, many times when it's all in a pack. Yeah, like maybe above your head in a big city bus. Yeah, a big pack like that. Yeah, that, that wouldn't have been pleasant no matter how it was mounted, but like I was saying, kind of like gasoline, I wouldn't want that above my head, and I sure wouldn't want a battery pack up there either. So the main takeaway here is whenever these things are fully charged, so they're the most energy dense, and we do not want to strike these or short them out in any kind of way. I have never had a bad experience with these lithiums. I had one that got hot on me and I took it outside and put it in sand. It did not catch on fire. But I do respect these and I absolutely believe in working on these when they're more discharged. Discharged down to their lowest capacity before working on them. The next thing I want to talk about, I get asked a lot about where do I buy my sales from? So I do have sites like 18650batterystore.com that I do rely on for some sale replacements, but by far my best supply of sales comes from buying older sales or keeping older sales or before the pandemic, you could even go to places like Home Depot or Lowe's and any type of recycling bin and you could get batteries out of there and save a lot of the 18650 sales. And yeah, a lot of them may not be good, but I'll show you going through here on my bench how I go through and, and do thoroughly test these cells for internal resistance as well as capacity and that's a very important step. Now since the pandemic it seems to be harder to find and I've even had comments that that's a lot harder to find now is recycled um, like batteries in the recycling bin and I agree I've had I've had a lot less luck with that as well but still keeping old packs packs that get recycled or I have bought some non-working packs from people in lots but um, they actually sometimes bring more than they're really worth because you don't know the condition of the sales. So, but that is the best way that I find exact match replacement sales. So we take this pack here, for example, after I get through testing it, I would definitely make sure that I took it and discharge it all the way to about 2.7 volts per cell. And I would do it with something like this electronic load this battery capacity tester that I have, and I've used multiple times in videos. It don't have to be just like this, but something similar that can pull, you know, even high voltage things up to 100 volts. It can actually hook to it and just be electronic load to pull it down to a cutoff level that you can actually control and set yourself. This is an example of a cell that did get hot on me, but it didn't catch on fire. And so while we're talking about safety as well, this is half of a battery pack. I think this come out of a four amp hour Ego 56 volt battery and I have taken a lot of these 
spot welded tabs are loose. And I know this one is at zero volts. I know I showed this pack in a previous video actually being zero volts. But I'm just trying to show here that if one is charged on you, you have to be very careful when you're taking these tabs loose. Whether it's a screwdriver or one of my favorites here, these with the flat tips. It gets in there and pull and wedges and pries pretty well. But you can just see here, you don't want none of this to come across in different potential. Especially when the back side is connected as well. Which in this example, I already have all the back side taken loose. So there is no potential here on camera of this. Um, actually sparking or shorting out as well as the battery showing zero volts Sometimes I'll even take a insulator like so and help pry you know whether it's with the pliers or a screwdriver And help you pull this off and there's even another danger to worry about with tabs And that's how sharp these can be kind of like a razor and they can uh, they can cut you So you might even want to wear gloves or be very careful when handling these tabs And after we take the end caps loose we can remove these individual cells now and that's just one way to, to try to safely uh, take out some individual cells for testing. So now using this Opus BTC3400 Intelligent Tester, we're going to be testing out these cells here. And I already have two of each kind in here for testing. And as you can see during the test, I could already put an X on one of them because it has taken way, way longer than any others and it still isn't at full potential. So. I already know that battery has issues without going any further with the test. The one on the right is not actually looking too great either, but we'll keep going here just for an example. They all at about 4.14 volts and they're fully charged. And now I'm gonna go through a quick test and the quick test is gonna do internal resistance. And boy, look at that third cell. I don't think I've ever seen internal resistance that high. That cell is definitely ready for the recycling bin. And we'll see the others are all below 250. So that's that's good to me, especially for a used cell. Just so you know, these cells here are not going to be for battery packs. They're, they have enough age on them that I'm just going to use these for flashlights. But I'm still kind of going through and showing you how I would normally do a, a cell for testing. I'm going to take a silver marker here and write on here the, the internal resistance measurement of it. I'm going to change it up. I'm going to do a black sharpie for camera. I think the silver might glare more, but I usually use a silver marker. But anyway, 242 milliohms. Uh, let's make it ohms. There we go. Looks like an R. But yeah, that way I know what it measured. And I'm going to do these other two as well. I'm going to redo them. It did show a good low reading there. I'm going to show you that sometimes this does vary. You just take it out and put it back in into the slot and it will do the quick test again. But I'm also going to show here that you can go through and do slot and pick all the slots and pick the test again. And you can go through and you can check all of them. And I usually do this three times and just do the average. But here, I'm just going to write these down. 249, 290, that's fine. As I mentioned, these are only going to be for flashlights that I have. As long as um, the internal resistance is low enough and then also the capacity is good and, and they don't drift down in voltage, which we'll talk about later. I'm going to put these now into what they call the charge test. And I'll go through and I'll put these all at a thousand milliamps and do charge test. And what that'll do is it'll charge, it'll make sure it's charged all the way up to 4.15 volts or so. And then it'll pull it all the way down and give us a milliamp hour reading. And then it'll charge it back up the full for us and it's done. So you can see these here that I've already done before. As you can see, I wrote now with silver Sharpie, but um, I put on here what the milliamp hour rating is as well as the internal resistance. And these three right here, for example, all came from the same DeWalt battery pack. And I picked these three just to show that you can't just go by the internal resistance and you can't all go by your milliamp hour capacity rating because my lowest reading here in milliohms is actually my lowest in milliamp hour as well. And we, we kind of look for the opposite. We kind of want, you know, a new cell will be at least over or at its rated capacity and these particular Samsung's 18650s here should be around 30 milliohm brand new. So that's the spec. Now, whether our tester can, can get that real good with the connection points, it's not likely, but we just want to get a good, at least guesstimation um, of how bad the internal resistance is. But I do really want to look at the capacity um, very well and how long it'll keep a charge so we take a pack like this and before i discharge it i go across and i check all the cells so here you can see i've already x'd out the one i'm calling b3 
and typically I do have a BMS board hooked up and I have a video showing this if you're interested on the Ego 56 volt batteries but going through and checking B1, B2, B3 etc if I just go to my balance leads here all of them pretty much show like 3.8 volts at this point except for this B3 if we go across its balance leads we're reading 0.2 so we know this battery is um beyond bringing back but I can put a voltage on it and it still doesn't really climb like it should and we see here we're pretty high in resistance across it so it's not it's not like it's a shorter battery it's just a lost all capacity it's now a bad cell this one definitely will have to be replaced as we peel all this off and I have to take off the um the spot welding strips and this is just a 14s 1p battery so this is the easier ones to work on instead of being 2p or two batteries per series connection this is a 2.5 amp hour battery instead of like a 4 amp hour or a 5 amp hour and by the way this is the onboard little trace fuse on these that some people ask about and i have had those blow before on these egos just wanted to show that while i had it there but yeah and it doesn't matter actually what type of battery it is it's a very similar process here's a ryobi and um, this ryobi's got a bad cell and i would absolutely have to check the capacity of the cell that's still in there in parallel with the bad one and actually test that capacity and i would try to test that internal resistance and i would try to match that battery as best as i can because you see that this one is actually instead of a 1p this is a 2p battery you see that we have our our five cells but we have two sets of five cells here so it's a 2p 5s so there's two cells in parallel this in series with five other sets the same way giving us a total here of four amp hours in 18 well 18 volts nominal or 20 volts max so here's a old dyson battery pack here that i'm just showing that this is a 1p battery but this is actually a 6s or a 24 volt battery but of course these 1p batteries are the easiest to work on the tabs are just in series and pretty straightforward pretty easy to disassemble when you have a cell issue so back now if we look at these they have done their test here they are back fully charged which is awesome all i have to do now is just simply write the capacity on here and this test is done so this is very very handy i kind of know what i got here um, i'll put an x on this one because as i mentioned these are all 2000 milliamp hour cells and 677 is just not going to cut it to the recycle bin you go but these two right here will be great batteries for flashlights but i'm not done yet i'll set them aside and make sure my voltage does not drop off over time it's not recommended to leave lithium stored charged but i do it for my third and final test actually i i want to make sure as i put it up for storage that when i go to grab one and use it i just want to test to make sure it has not dropped down very low but just to show you here these that come out of the dewalt pack that i tested a few months ago what I expect with this lower capacity one is probably going to be down. All right, see this 3.9 volts. All right, 3.9 don't sound bad, but usually when I get through charging them, they're about 4.1, 4.15. So if we check here, look, 4.15, 4.13, 4.1, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, 4.5. And yeah, we had 3.9. So I would definitely um, not consider this anyway for a battery pack, as I mentioned, but sometimes these will make a good flashlight battery as long as they're not dropping off too much so what i'll do with this one i won't recycle it yet but i am going to put a question mark on it oops sorry i'm out of the camera view here i'm just putting a question mark on it so if this drops down any more and the next time i go to use it then i'll actually just recycle it because you don't want your flashlight to not be ready when you go to use it either so any of them that's dropping down i'll just go ahead and recycle their capacity or their or their life has really been diminished to the point where they're not very useful so also just to mention on internal resistance the smaller the battery sometimes you might want to use something like this insulated spring that i have here to give you a better connection especially if you get a high read and it's worth double checking as we see here this one right here got better just by giving it some more tension and moving it around a bit and also it helps to uh, make sure your connections are good and clean with some alcohol and i will at times get a q-tip and clean up my connection points you know as well as the battery connections herself you know um and just make sure we're getting the best test possible i also want to show here that yeah i got two brand new cells 
from 18650 battery store right here and yes I do check every even brand new sale that way I know what it's reading and I know what I have never really had a problem with these new sales but it, I always check them and write on there what the capacity is on my test so I'll know when I get ready to use it so I let these do a charge test so it charged them fully up brought it down gives me the milliamp hour rating and then it fully charged it back up so these are really ready to go i've already done the internal resistance test and now i'm just going to write down what my capacity test is and by the way this older ego cell here just it did not perform well it should be a 2000 milliamp hour out of a 4.0 amp hour pack i'm going to go through and do the uh, quick test on it as well and it gives me 91 milliohms and there we go these tests are done as well i'll put my new ones back in my my new battery drawer and my other used test ones are fully tested and charged for my voltage test at a later date and just to show you here that these are the INR 18650-20S as I showed in the video when I was talking about where I order some of these from that's actually the exact ones that I showed you because I had ordered them before and they usually have a good price and they're usually available well, it's a little bit hit or miss, but they're usually available when I need them. So now I want to talk a little bit about Cyber City Circuits. They give me this cool business card. I got to meet David and Chris, and David showed me around Cyber City Circuits. So, so what they do there is pretty cool. So this is a pick and place machine. See, electronic parts come on tape like this. And what it does is it takes these nozzles over here and it picks the part up off the tape and puts it on the board where it's supposed to go, like this. It has an upward facing camera right here that takes a picture of the part so it can find the center and place the part where it's supposed to go. Yeah, that is a lot of stencil. It's probably 10 more than that, that's a lot of stencil. Pretty cool, got your oven, awesome. Also, oh, this is the board y'all making, yeah. Making escape room props, that's really cool. There's one in this prop. There's one in this prop. Y'all got a lot of stuff here. One of your 3D printers you made here? No, that was that's old. That's just historic. That's a museum piece. It's a 2008 riprap. I'm loving the collection. I got a few things myself. Nothing like this. That's awesome. Now, Cyber City Circuits does great with teaching. Their service connected disabled war veteran owned small business, and they're here in Augusta, Georgia. How awesome is that? They got stuff like subscription boxes you can get if you'd like to learn more about that. You can also go to their website or on Facebook. And I really love the fact that they have classes where they're teaching these young people about electronics and might be stirring a passion for life for these young guys and these young ladies. So that is absolutely fantastic. Love to see that. We, we are hurting for technical people in the future. So this is very important and a passion of mine. So I love to see Cyber City Circuits doing this. And it sure is great for the community. It was good to be able to meet David and Chris and get a tour and they took a few minutes to show me around get to learn a little bit about what they're about and their passion for teaching young people so this is what they're about got to meet chris and david really fun people to talk to and just wishing the best here in augusta georgia so in the next video guys i want to talk a little bit about spot welding and spot welding versus soldering which is a big you know a big debate um i personally like spot welding a lot better I have soldered very few occasions. Um, it needs to be done quick and keep it cool. It's, it's not recommended and um, you definitely want to avoid heat on a cell. And I would absolutely never even attempt to solder on one that's fully charged. But, but that's for another video. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I have some links down in this video of some tools and interesting items that I found helpful on my workbench this charger and tester that I've mentioned here in this video, as well as some spot welders and other things that I really like and use a lot on my workbench. Those are affiliate links. Any link you click on helps support the channel 
and I greatly appreciate it. So thanks so much for watching, and God bless.